Hey there, welcome on back. As always, I'm Carl with Target's Attitude. Ask my professor of knives and all things sharp. Sit on back, grab your pens and paper. Today we're going to be taking a look at a cold steel. Specifically, the large Voyager. Yes, looking at the large Voyager from Cold Steel, specifically the Tonto style knife. Doing this as a result of a request from one of my viewers. Gotta admit, it's been a while since he made the request. Um, I was having troubles getting it in, which is annoying in the extreme, but I finally got it in, so let's take a look at it. But first, a little bit of syllabus work, as always. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I do primarily knife reviews, though I also do occasional reviews of camping gear, maybe some survival gear. I also have a series on Mondays called Knife Basics, What Your Daddy Forgot to Teach You. It's aimed at people who are somewhat new to the knife world, just started getting into the hobby of knife collecting, and want to know what the hell we're talking about when we start pulling out all these big fancy words. For those of you who have been around for a while, welcome back. I'm glad to see you. Just got one question for you. Have you subscribed yet? Okay, so you have, and you have, and you have, and you have, and... Oh, wow! Got someone up in Canada. That's great. It goes fantastic, considering we've already got someone in France and Australia. So everything is... Wait a minute. Dude, you're right here in South Carolina. You're less than a half hour from me. You haven't subscribed yet? Oh, come on, man. So simple. Just hit that button right down there. It says subscribe. Then you hit the little bell next to it. That way you get notified every time you put up a neat new video. It's a win-win situation. Win for you because you get notified every time I do a neat new video. Win for me because, well, let's be honest. The more subscribers I have, the easier it is to get all these neat new things. But, on to class. As I say, a subscriber wanted me to review th this, and I gotta admit, I don't carry a lot of cold steel, mainly because everyone and their brother has cold steel knives for sales. Why? They're one of the biggest knife companies in the country. Um, not all of them are made here in the States. They do have some made in China, some made in Japan, some made in Taiwan, uh, some down in South America, but a number of them are still here, made here in the U.S. Unfortunately, the Voyager is not one of them. Matter of fact, if you look on the blade right here, it specifically says that it's made in Taiwan. It also tells you that it's made with AUS 10A steel, which... That's one of the selling points of uh, cold steel. They've got good quality steel, even when it's made someplace other than America. Uh, the other selling point is, well, if you know cold steel, you probably know about Lynn Thompson. If you don't, well, let me go on a bit of a ramble here before we get back to the knife. Lynn Thompson is the guy who founded and started cold steel. Um, he is a martial artist. He did study Western style boxing and judo, but where he really shone was Shotokan and Wadaru. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Shotokan I'm very familiar with. Um, I had an instructor way back in the Dark Ages who taught Shotokan. Um, his philosophy was, if a fight takes more than one punch on your part, you did something wrong. Um, it's very hard style, but it is very effective. Personally, I prefer Kempo, American Kempo, but let's be honest. There's no dangerous martial arts. Uh, it's all in the practitioner. Someone who is a great martial artist is going to make any of the martial arts work. Someone who is half-hearted about martial arts 
could study the most dangerous martial arts out there and he's still going to be a pushover. Uh, Lynn Thompson is definitely not a pushover. And he puts his years of experience in the martial arts into every knife he made. He also came up with the American style Tonto, which is slightly different from the traditional Tonto. More of a chisel point instead of a uh, sharp radius up. A little bit blunter. But it's just, he really did well. Now the Voyager, as you said, already found out, is AUS 10A stainless, made in Taiwan. It is, let me double check something here. I always like to double check my notes before I go too far. Yeah, the blade is a full four inches long. That is a hell of a blade. Closed thing is five and a quarter inches long. It's a lockback. This one is a very stiff lockback. Matter of fact, let me open it back up again and shut up. See if you can hear this. Did you hear the click when it came unlocked? That's because it locks up so tightly and so completely. It is not a flipper. You open it with thumb studs, but it still does open very nicely. And it is extremely comfortable in the hand. The blade is called uh, Griv X, which seems to be used only by cold steel. I have not seen it anywhere else. But if you're going to be honest, they call it the newest version of uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic. In other words, it's another version of FRN or fiberglass reinforced nylon. Um, it makes for a very light handle, very well textured. I've done a good job of the ergonomics on it. Um, the fidget factor on this is, considering it locks up so tightly and it's hard to unlock, considering how big it is, Fidget factor is fairly low on this one. You're not going to stand there all day flicking it open and closed. But on the other hand, this is designed to be a working knife, not anything even close to being a toy. So let's see how well they did, shall we? We'll go through our standard battery tests. As always, this is straight out of the box. No touch-up, no nothing. Oh, I forgot to mention, pocket clip can be switched for left-hand carry in addition to the right-hand tip-up carry that it comes. And it comes with a spare pocket clip, which surprised me. Very few knives do that. But Cold Steel did it with this one. So, But back to the testing, shall we? Does a real nice job on the paper, even though it's a re relatively thick blade. Definitely can't complain about that. Do wish it had some jimping on the back, but it doesn't. On the other hand, as thick as the blade is, doesn't really need it. Here, standard piece of quick cardboard. That just went right through. Just shredding that, no problem at all. So yeah, need to open up a cardboard box. This will do it in a heartbeat. Let's see here. You know what? I forgot to grab an empty uh, bottle to open. Well, we'll go to the uh, paracord test, and then we will 
see about finding that. Now see this piece basically already cut. Let's find a new piece to cut here. Uh, there's the paracord. The question is where is the end? There's the end. And no kitten, you can't play with paracord. I'm sorry. Give me. Give me. Cats. Gotta love them, but don't try to do anything with any type of cordage around them. It's just not going to work. But anyway. Go through a large loop of this stuff very quick and easy. What I would call a large loop for any other knife. This won't quite go around that way. It's such a big blade. But on the other hand, the tip handled it just beautifully. And let's go for a small little loop. One. And launch. <coughs> Doing great. But I did goof, so let me go. Come on, close you. Give me just one second. Let me go get an empty bottle, and we'll do the egg package test. Okay, I'm back. So let's go ahead and open this up again. Standard peach tea bottle. Well, actually, this one is raspberry. But I yeah, see here. In, no problem. Even with the thick blade, you just right on in and around. Very quick and easy. Very sweet. Let's see here. Maybe cowhide. Nuts. Design this a hunting knife or skinning knife, but let's see how it does with this, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. It's cutting it fairly nicely. I wouldn't use it to try to. Uh, do any leather craft, but it'll cut the leather. Uh, let's see here. What? Oh, yes. Next. Zip tie. See how it does with this. As you can see. Zip ties are just so handy for so many things, but they're pain to cut. Let's see how it does with this, shall we? On. Second time went, obviously it almost cut through on the first time because it took no pressure at all on the second. That time it cut one slice just fine. So... Yeah, and just, not that it's standard part of the test, but let's see how it does on chopping through it, shall we? Nope, the handle got in the way, but that's okay. Now let's see how it does on standard piece of scrap lumber from the wood shop. Uh. 
It's feathering it up quite quick and quite nicely. Can't complain about that. Let me grab my glove here and we'll see how it does on the tonic. This one I could probably get away with out the glove, but after the way my wife took after me on that one accident, let's not take a chance, shall we? So, let's see here. Now, now I say this every time, but it bears repeating. This is not recommended with a folding knife, because that pivot point is going to be a weakness that's going to give away sooner or later and uh, you don't want to give away when you're batoning um, you'll get hurt badly so but fresh out of the box never been used except for these tests should be safe to check to see if it will baton I think it's safe to say this thing will baton just about anything you need it to. I mean, yeah. Took that right apart. Beautiful. And, other than. I'm not really seeing anything on that edge other than sawdust and these scraps of leather. And that stonewash finished blade is still just going beautifully. So, let's get glove off here. Get a piece of paper back out and let's see. No damage whatsoever. If anything is actually cutting just a little bit better now than it did at the beginning. So there you have it. The Voyager Large Tonto from Cold Steel. Very hefty knife, very serious knife, but it's going to do just about anything you need it to do. Um, almost suspect it would punch through a car door if you needed it to. <clears throat> I'm not going to put it through that test, but I suspect it would do it. Very, very nice. And not that heavy considering the size. I mean, it's uh, about a third of a pound. But that's, for a knife of this size, that's pretty light. So... The only thing I'm not sure I like is how hard it is to unlock it. But on the other hand, I'd rather have to fight to unlock it than have it collapse in my hand. So I'm not going to unlock it for that. For everything else, as always, this Cold Steel has a real winner here. But even though I don't sell a lot of Cold Steel knives, it's pretty much what I expect from them. Mentally, they do have a lot of knives that are kind of uh, mall ninja-ish. But even the most mall ninja-ish tends to be well-made. Sure haven't ever had one uh, fail on me. I forgot to mention this one does have a lanyard hole there. Uh, makes it nice in another way. So, oh no. And again, um, to Tim who uh, requested this, again, I'm sorry it took me so long to get knife in so I could 
review it for you. But I uh, hope you enjoyed. In the meantime, you all take care of yourselves. We'll see you again next week. And as we go, I'll leave you a couple videos here that I hope you'll enjoy. And as always, you can just hit this target over here to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Hope you do. I hope to see you next week. Take care now. Bye.